Greetings and welcome to all. This is the 11th episode of Living Off the Grid in the City. I'm your host, Hector Vladimir, on this October 18th, 2015, early fall. Edited and updated April 6th, 2024. Temperatures are cooling fast, but the days are still pleasant. And this episode, I would like to continue with the topic of the technologies, involving the technologies that will enable you to get off the grid, specifically solar technologies. In the last episode, I discussed photovoltaic or PV solar technologies briefly. I will expand a bit more on that and move on to other solar technologies such as solar collectors, heat collectors, or light heat collectors, and solar greenhouse devices and I'll go into the details of those but to just expand a little bit more on the photovoltaic technology of solar photovoltaics is a growing and rapidly expanding industry prices are going down the technology keeps getting more and more efficient and the products and technologies keep being widely used in other words they keep spreading worldwide to many different areas of the world Hot centers of solar technologies include, as I mentioned, cities in Germany, many cities in Spain, Italy, France, and a few other countries in the EU are picking up solar. Even those countries in the far north, on the eastern side of Europe, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway being among those picking up solar. Hotspots also include China, which has emerged as a global leader in solar energy with extensive efforts to drive its adoption. The country has made substantial investments in solar infrastructure, manufacturing, and research and development. Germany has been at the forefront of solar energy adoption and has demonstrated commendable efforts in driving its expansion. The country implemented a successful feed-in tariff system that incentivized individuals to invest in solar installations and sell excess electricity back to the grid. Germany has made substantial investments in research and development, leading to technological advancements in solar panel efficiency and manufacturing. Japan has been at the forefront of solar power technology since the late 1990s, as well as being a global leader in power generation. Japan ranks third among countries with the largest solar power capacity, with a fleet totaling 63.2 gigawatts in 2019, according to the IEA. India has demonstrated a strong commitment to solar energy and emerged as a global leader in its adoption. The country has set ambitious renewable energy targets. Solar power in India is a fast developing industry, being one of the countries with the largest production of energy from renewable sources. India has made great efforts over the past few years to limit its CO2 emissions and increase its share of renewable energy within its energy mix. The United States of America, another world leader when it comes to solar energy, has been actively promoting solar energy as part of its commitment to clean and renewable sources of power. The country has implemented a range of initiatives to drive solar adoption, including federal tax incentives, grant and loan programs. Various states have enacted renewable portfolio standards and net metering policies, encouraging homeowners and businesses to invest in solar installations. The U.S. government has also supported research and development in solar technology and facilitated public-private partnerships. As a result, the country has experienced significant growth in solar capacity, making it one of the largest solar markets globally. The U.S. continues to prioritize renewable energy, aiming to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and achieve a sustainable energy future. Australia has made remarkable strides in harnessing solar energy and has become a global leader in its adoption. The country's abundant sunshine and favorable policies have driven significant growth in residential and commercial solar installations. Australia has implemented various initiatives, including generous feed-in tariffs, financial incentives, and renewable energy targets. The government has also supported research and development in solar technology and encouraged the integration of energy storage systems. These efforts have not only reduced carbon emissions but also created jobs and stimulated economic growth. Australia's commitment to solar energy showcases its dedication to a sustainable future and positions it as a role model in renewable energy transition. Canada is actively pursuing efforts to transition towards solar energy and reduce its reliance on traditional fossil fuels. The country has implemented various policies and programs to support solar adoption. Federal and provincial governments offer incentives such as grants, tax credits.
credits and net metering programs to encourage residential, commercial, and industrial solar installations. Canada is also investing in research and development to enhance solar technology, improve efficiency, and reduce costs. Additionally, the country is focusing on promoting solar in remote and off-grid communities, aiming to provide clean and reliable energy access. Through these initiatives, Canada is steadily advancing its solar energy sector and contributing to a greener and more sustainable future. And these pieces of information are from E3 Solar, a British Columbia, Canada-based company. Solar technologies, photovoltaics, again, are widely available technologies that are increasingly affordable and easy to use. They have many technologies that work directly with solar panels, solar lamps, street lights, radios, television devices, charging devices for phones and other portable electronics are out in the market and widely available through internet retail sources such as Amazon and eBay, Newegg and Overstock. Look those up if you're interested in saving a few bucks. Many cities here in the United States do have physical stores where you can go and pick up the different solar technologies, but in the southeast, those are, for my experience, quite limited. Here in the central northern Georgia areas, I'm yet to see one operating in the light of day. There are a few installing service and sales companies that are here operating in the state of Georgia, and they're becoming more and more common throughout the United States, especially in the state of California, as you may well know, and picking up steam rapidly in Texas, New Jersey, New York. Of course, those are, for very many technologies, leading states. Florida, picking up steam. Not a whole lot of the southeast states, except Florida, are expanding in any significant way as of 2024 with solar technologies. Those states apparently are lagging far behind the rest of the country. Texas has emerged as a major center for solar development technologies and overall PV installations. Texas ranks second in the nation of installed PV megawatts with 17,247 megawatts installed. If you're like me and live in one of the states in the southeast that are lagging far behind of the top solar energy producing states, may have more of a hard time acquiring acceptance for installing these systems. As I may have mentioned before, many areas, many neighborhoods, communities frown on persons that install solar photovoltaic technologies, especially when their installations are out in the open, visible to passers-by, which are very commonly on rooftops. Many communities have outright banned the installation of rooftop solar panels with few exceptions in those communities of them being hidden from view which is a hard thing to do especially since the installation of rooftop solar panels depends very much on the orientation as far as cardinal points is concerned the orientation of your roof is highly important as all solar panels should be facing south towards the equator for them to work correctly. Here in North America in the Northern Hemisphere, if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, this would be the opposite. Photovoltaic solar panels do require direct sunlight to work to generate electric energy. The more perpendicular the sun rays are to the solar panel itself, the better. So it's usually here in the Southeast region of the United States. It is optimal for solar panels to be at a about 40 degree angle facing south and that's for permanent or fixed solar arrays. If I haven't mentioned this, a solar array is just a collection or group of solar panels that are attached to a rooftop area via a structure or a rail system or rack system. Solar installations, depending on size, location, type of roof, type of mounts, equipment, they could be somewhat expensive, especially larger installations of about 20 panels or more. They could require a team of professionals and including at least one electrician to make the required physical installations and electrical connections. It is, however, increasingly affordable to perform and be able to do such installations. And it is a technology and a trade that is, again, lowering in price constantly. I just heard a report from the state of, I believe it was New Jersey, where a private citizen decided to finally go solar 
and install a set of solar panels in his roof because he was finally able to afford it because the company offered him a very attractive payment plan and basically did not charge him for the installation of the solar panels. He's basically renting out his rooftop for a solar company. He's paying with the money he saves from the conventional power company. He's paying that money to the solar company, so he's breaking even. He's not, at the moment at least, saving any money, but he's very energy source conscious. And apparently, it does make a difference to him where his energy originates from. This is something that's very important to bring across to potential customers. It is not all about saving a few bucks. It is about so many other things, as I mentioned some or many of them before. It is about the environment and it is about choice. It is about an industry, helping out an industry that could revolutionize, that is revolutionizing the current electric energy and power production industry. And it's revolutionizing the economy as a whole, revolutionizing civilization, making things better. You want to be part of it, you want to be able to help. How do you help? By using the technology and demanding it. There are many advantages of using solar and many disadvantages to using the current conventional grid or power structure, as I mentioned in quite a bit of detail in my previous shows. I have dedicated perhaps a few shows just to the disadvantages of using the current grid system. Coming back to discussing some of the solar technologies, solar technologies keep improving. Not long ago, maybe less than two years ago, they released in a widespread manner in the everyday markets the thin film solar technologies which is a cheaper and highly efficient version of the solar wafer when i say solar wafer it is in about a four inch square of solar film which is the way it's made is solid it's made with a combination of chemicals and materials that are put together in various layers that make up a solar cell or solar wafer these solar cells, they are arranged to form a module, a solar module. They are usually blue, but could vary in texture, and looks, and color. But they are fabricated with a mixture of compounds and silicones. Some of them combined with various types of metals. Silicone is a semiconductor. It's a combination of a metal and a plastic, if you can envision that. And it is made in a highly precise and involved process. There are many major companies out there producing photovoltaic solar cells. Per TrendForce and PV Magazine, as of 2022, TrendForce has ranked the top six module manufacturers by shipment volume, with Longi topping the list, followed by Trina Solar and Jinko Solar. JA Solar, Canadian Solar, and Risen Energy rounded out the top six in a year dominated by large format modules. All of the main manufacturers are based in China. Longi Solar took the first spot with 45 gigawatts to 47 gigawatts, followed by Trina Solar with around 43 gigawatts and Jinko Solar with 42 gigawatts to 43 gigawatts. JA Solar came in fourth with 39.75 gigawatts, followed by Canadian Solar with 21 gigawatts, and Risen Energy with 16 gigawatts. These solar cell manufacturers, they're usually very advanced and capable companies. It is not something you can just manufacture in your backyard or your mama's garage. It is something that you have to basically buy and bulk. You can delve into this and perhaps try to assemble these solar modules together using solar cells. It is a very complicated and skill-demanding task, but if you feel up to the challenge, by all means, dive into it. And as a basic explanation of how I understand solar modules work, Solar modules are a combination of a few dozens of these solar wafers or solar cells arranged on a grid manner and soldered together using wiring, which is more or less flat conductors that basically transport the electrons that are generated with the solar lights. When the solar light impacts the surface of the solar wafer, there is a chemical reaction within the wafer being built the way it is, and one side of the wafer produces a stronger electron attraction than the other side. And when you have two sides of one material, or two areas of one material producing different amounts of electron movement, 
basically atoms release and take electrons at different rates. One side has atoms that release and take electrons at a higher rate than the other side within the same wafer, within the same material. Then you have a differential, an electrical difference. When you have an electrical difference, you, in effect, have a battery. A battery, all it needs is a common wire for electrons to flow one end to the other. Basically, as I understand it, this is what a solar cell does. Electrons flow from one side of the wafer to the other, and electrons are channeled through wiring to the next wafer in line. The next wafer in line has the same chemical reaction with sunlight, and it also has wiring which channels electrons to the next wave and the next. And this process repeats on each and every one of the solar wafers, therefore creating electrical current, which ultimately is channeled up to one end of the electrical wire that comes out that is attached to the solar module. There are two main wires that are attached to the solar module, one for negative current and one for the positive side. When these are connected in series to another panel, the current travels to that other panel and do, do. the process repeats in that panel and you basically have a solar array of two or more solar modules. This process basically converts solar lights into DC current then into whatever system you have it connected to. A solar energy system usually is composed of a solar module, related wiring, a battery, which before it hits the battery, it goes through a battery charge controller, which is a device that controls the amount of energy that goes into the battery. As you may know, batteries cannot constantly charge or overcharge because they have the possibility of exploding or catching fire, melting if there is too much charge. So the charge controller which detects when a battery is full and essentially cuts off charge before the battery gets overcharged. And that is basically how a solar system works from the batteries. Then it's just a matter of connecting it to either a DC load, which are your devices, appliances, or if you're going to use AC or DC energy or current needs to be transformed or inverted into AC. That's why they call that device that inverts DC to AC an inverter and it basically multiplies the voltage, amplifies the voltage from about 12 volts or 24 volts that may come out of the battery into 120 plus volts needed for alternating currents or AC currents. Of course to multiply 12 volts you have to increase the power times 10 to get 120 volts AC so there is a energy loss or potential loss from 12 volts to 120 because you have to basically multiply and when you multiply electrical power you lose current you lose the ability to have more current less voltage more current more voltage less current that's just a law called Ohm's law, which if you have any kind of experience or training with electricity, it's the core concept of electricity. Solar energy, although it sounds a bit complicated, it is a very simple technology to work with. It is a very old technology, not only the non-photovoltaic side of it, but the photovoltaic basic concept goes back to the 1800s credited to be discovered by a French scientist Edmund Becquerel certain materials react to light. The discovery that some materials react to light and increase in electric charge is a very old and established phenomena concept discovered many decades ago. So solar is nothing new. Solar has been improving over the years. Solar improved quite rapidly after the space age started in the 1950s after the first world war and of course one of the primary uses for solar was for space-based vehicles or space satellites. The many space probes have used solar as their source of power or as their supplemental source of power because it's so abundant out in space within the solar system. Solar energy is here to stay. As I mentioned before, we have been using it for ages. We're just using it now in different ways, one of them being to produce electrical energy. As I mentioned, there are other solar technologies. 
including some that I don't yet understand fully, but I will still share with you here through some research of my own and through some learning experiences I've had and some experimentation also. Solar heat collectors, which are basically greenhouses, are very effective and very easy to build technologies. If you live in a warm and sunny area of the world, then you can build or buy some of those technologies that include solar collection. Why would you use solar light collection? Well, when you collect light in an enclosed area, if you've ever experienced being in a room that has been closed off with clear windows with some sunlight, you will really fast find out that this area is a lot warmer or hotter than the rest of the other areas outside of this enclosure. This is called the greenhouse effect and it's basically sun rays, radiation entering a room, bouncing off within the room off of various materials and heating up the molecules within those materials, thus the air within the room, thus raising the temperature in that room. That is the greenhouse effect. It does not have to necessarily happen within an enclosed room. It does happen within the atmosphere of the Earth. Very important and necessary phenomenon that happens within the atmosphere. Without it, we would be in an ice bar Earth living in a frozen wasteland right now. So the greenhouse effect has been with us and it's a concept that we can harness and use for our advantage. Solar collectors could be easily built. All you need is some wood, wood panels, lumber, some clear plexiglass panels or glass, tempered glass or any other clear sheet glass and build you a box. Paint it black inside and basically put that box in the sun. Seal it, put the sheet of clear material on top on one face, face the sun, seal it and watch the temperature rise inside of the box very rapidly. As you may know, heat is a type of energy that may drive or that drives a variety of technologies. It could be used to warm up other mediums or substances such as water for bathing. It could be used for air heat, for heating up your home. As I attempted two years ago, I made a heat collector for water heating. Now, this may be a bit complicated to do if you're not familiar with building or are not very handy. But it is quite possible for the experienced, knowledgeable, and curious person to just go ahead and build a box, put a clear sheet of plastic, seal it, and put some tubing inside where you run water through. This tubing would carry cool water into the box, let it sit for however long it takes. If you live in a very sunny and hot area, you do not need to wait long for it to warm up for the water within the pipe to warm up. If you live in a cooler place, it may take much longer, but it does work. Run water through it, wait whatever required time, and this way you may have hot water or warm water available for whatever task or activity you may need it for. A heat collector for air or water heating is a device that may be easily built using very accessible materials without the need of elaborate or expensive facilities. Another solar technology that is a lot more complex are the heat concentrators. Heat concentrators basically reflect sunlight to a specific point and heat that point to a very high degree and that fluid, whether it's air or some type of liquid, whether it be oil or water, is heated to a very high degree and then transferred to be used in another area for heating, for example, a space or heating up water. Commercial or utility grade heat concentrators use an array of mirrors and tubes filled with a certain fluid that is heated up with the light concentrated by the mirrors and the very hot fluid or vapor is transferred to turbines for electric current generation. Various shapes of surfaces are used to create a mirrored concentration of light like parabolas, dishes or arced or curved surfaces. The heat concentrator method could be used to build a solar cooker, for example, with a parabola and a point where the cooking is performed. Light heat concentration may be achieved via various shapes of glass, such as concave and convex, where light, such as sunlight, is concentrated into a point to raise the temperature. Light concentration has been with us for ages and it is something readily used and built to get off the grid. 
Lastly, I want to discuss how to build a heat concentrator or light concentrator. There are many ways. One way I recommend is getting a satellite dish. Satellite dishes are readily available from neighbors, friends, family. Those things are very widespread here in America because of TV services that use them, such as DirecTV and Dish Network, DirectWay, Use Network, and Wild Blue. These are several companies that use parabolas or reflectors to collect RF signals from their satellites and they concentrate those signals into a point right in front of it. These dishes could be modified to collect light from the sun and they are highly effective. I am in the process of building one of those myself. All I will have to do is get one of those dishes and resurface the gray, opaque or black area that they are usually painted with and put a chrome finish to it or put chrome tape on this area. You basically have a curved area that reflects lights on a point in front of it and just by having a reflective surface you can very well collect lights into this point in front of the reflector to do various things for various applications. Some of those applications include cooking, heating water, heating air. The most popular application for that is cooking. You can cook and heat up water very readily with these dishes. All you gotta do is put a fixture to put some kind of container where the point of concentration is, which is usually marked by where the end of the arm that sticks out of these dishes is. You can basically locate this point of concentration very easily in these dishes. You replace the eyepiece that comes with them and note, mark, do whatever it takes to mark where the location of the eyepiece is and that's where your point of concentration is. That's where your light will be concentrated. You can also use some kind of reflective material. See where the light is being concentrated, where it is the brightest. Just move it back and forth from the dish and you will see where you should put your medium for heating. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please look for the next episode soon and please ensure to share this with your friends and family. And please like this content and subscribe as a sign of support and for me to continue to provide this type of content to more people like you. Lastly, if you wish to support this content further, please visit the links provided in this publication. Thank you.